Trojans Live. We're live inside the Galen Center getting you set for USC UCLA. We want the crosstown perspective here. So we've got the Bruins beat writer for the LA Times, Ben Bolch. And as he reminded me, back in the day, he was also a USC beat writer. Those were good days uh, back in uh, for the Nick Young era. I think Nick is actually Nick and, and Gabe Pruitt, I think, are both supposed to be in the house today. And we just had Desmond Farmer. So sort of that generation will be well represented here. Uh, but let's talk about this UCLA season first and, and, and what's happened so far they've given you a lot to write about I know writers always appreciate that uh, it's it's been a lot like a, a couple of USC football seasons we've seen where you, where you have the change right right in the middle and now you're in that sort of interim coach bump period uh, how would you describe what, what you've seen sort of halfway through this year well you know they came in in the season nationally ranked with a lot of young guys and, and I knew that player development was going to be kind of the key to this season and uh, I got to say they got off to a slow start on that front uh, obviously had, you know, they were undefeated going into a Vegas tournament where they, they kind of got smacked in the face by Michigan State, North Carolina. Really didn't rebound that well. Well, actually, they did initially rebound well. They beat Loyola Mount, yeah. Bear Mount, and, and Notre Dame. But then they cratered during that four-game losing streak where they had the home losses to Belmont and Liberty, and that was it for Steve Alford. And then they've kind of had a reboot here with Murray Bartow. Uh, three really kind of thrilling, high-energy wins. Uh, well, at least the last five, six minutes of that Oregon game. Uh, but then they kind of reverted to some bad habits against Oregon State in their last game. So we've kind of seen uh, some different UCLA teams here over the last few weeks. From a USC perspective, the Alford era is interesting in that he and Enfield came in at the same time, but they, they inherited very different teams. They also inherited very different situations. I, I don't think UCLA basketball fans necessarily would draw the direct comparison. You know, they always sort of think bigger, and so a guy making a, a three Sweet Sixteens is not the expectations. Uh, ultimately, what was what was Steve Alford's undoing in Westwood? Well, I think it was a couple of things. I mean, you look at those Sweet Sixteens. Yes, they did get there, but uh, you know, you look at who they who they beat. I mean, right. I think there were some 12 seeds, some 14 seeds. One year they, they were kind of even gifted that tournament bid. Really, only one elite season with the Lonzo Ball yeah. 31 win season, and, and some people would say that was disappointed that they didn't go further, only getting to the Sweet Sixteen. So I think. Uh, you know, if they'd had maybe one breakthrough year to the Elite Eight or Final Four, uh, Steve Alford would have had a better kind of bargaining position to stay on longer. What have you seen from Murray Bartow now that he's taken over as the interim coach? There's that sort of, you know, as I said, classic interim bounce. Uh, they started 3-1 and one with him, they, you know, all in conference. So what, what has he changed on or off the floor? Well, they've done a lot more pressing uh, in the backcourt, kind of a three-quarters trap. Um, and that really kind of, I think, boosted them those first two games against Stanford and Cal really energized them and, and kind of made up for a lot of their shortcomings. Uh, against Oregon, Oregon State, it wasn't as effective, and some of their, some of their other flaws kind of came through and, and, and really kind of cost them. So I'll be interested to see if they can get uh, kind of the high energy that they had in those first two games and the comeback against Oregon, or they kind of, kind of revert to some of the problems that showed up again against Oregon State. Chris Wilkes is an interesting player. Uh, he's the star guy in the sense he's a leading scorer. He scored in double figures in, in, in every single game, gave US, USC a real hard time in the Galen Center uh, last year in that game. But it sounds like he's gone through a little bit of a shooting slump, and uh, his sophomore season hasn't necessarily been the, the breakout that, that, that many predicted. What have you seen from, from the Bruins star? Yeah, as you said, you know, you, you can count on him at least getting a double figures every game. The question is going to be efficiency. Yep. And we saw uh, late in the first half against Oregon State, Murray Bartow actually benched Chris Wilkes, which was kind of stunning because he's closed several uh, first halves with three pointers that have really kind of boosted UCLA. So I think he was really trying to send a message to him. Uh, he said he met with him during the week to talk about getting good shots and playing within kind of the team concept and being a more well all well rounded player when his shot's not falling to help in other ways. Leadership's been a big topic of conversation for this USC team. It sounds like there's some questions for, for UCLA. Who, who is the leader of this team on the well, court? Well, that that's that's the issue. No, I don't. I can't really say. You know, you would think it would be. Uh, some of the older guys, Prince Ali is the only uh, junior or senior yeah. in the playing rotation right now. Uh, and, you know, he, he's, I think, up in that category. But I, I think uh, one guy who's emerged that I should mention is Jalen Hands. I don't know if you saw the chin lift moment against Oregon yep. that kind of went semi-viral where did, yeah. uh, Moses Brown committed turnover. He was kind of sulking back on defense. Jalen Hands literally walked over to him and lifted his chin up. So I think that that's kind of a moment that UCLA is, is hoping can kind of galvanize this team. Well, when you look at this game, uh, if you were UCLA, what do you think their biggest concern is looking at USC? Well, Murray Bartow says, and, and I do believe him, that it's 95% about what they do. Um, he thinks that if they can play at their pace, uh, which is up-tempo even more so than, than they've been doing, you know, that first two games against Stanford and Cal, I think they averaged 95 points. So that's kind of what they're hoping for. 
Um, against SC, I don't think they're going to quite be able to get there. But, you know, high energy, high intensity, play good defense, create some turnovers with the traps, and move the ball on offense. That's been an Achilles heel of this team all season long. They've not moved the ball. Jalen Hands, I think, is still leading the Pac-12 in, yeah. in, in assists. But outside of him, I don't think they have anybody else averaging more than two assists per game. So they need a team effort and moving the ball and getting good shots. Yeah, and I noticed a lot of guys with negative assisted turnover ratios, too. Uh, Singleton did have that good week uh, against the Barriers schools was quite up against the Oregon schools. As you mentioned, going back, you've seen this rivalry from, from both sides as a USC beat writer, UCLA beat writer. How would you characterize the rivalry and maybe the slightly different angles on it from, from, from both schools? Well, um, I know that when I covered SC, the only game that you knew was guaranteed to be close to sold out was the UCLA yeah. game and maybe, maybe the Arizona game to an extent. Yeah. But, uh, you know, high energy game, we were just kind of reminiscing about the 07 game here, which was a classic um, you, you, you know, you see the, the, the crowd dotted with the colors of the, of the visiting team every time uh, this game is played, and which is a lot of fun. Uh, I, I just think it's a high-energy uh, rivalry on both sides, and it's really the one time, as I said, that you can count on really SC being here in force to support its team. Where are the fan bases right now? Is the UCLA fan base up for the rest of the season because, you know, it's an interim coach and it's, it's exciting, or are they already trying to figure out who the next coach is going to well, be? Well, it's, it's funny. You know, I, I, I will admit to going on message boards, which <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't, but, uh, you know, there are some people who are worried that, you know, Murray Bartow could do so well that he could, uh, that, as they say, laven his way into the permanent job. Uh, but, I, I, you know, I, I think Murray's done a great job. Um, I, I think that this could be a kind of a stepping stone back to a Division One head coaching job for him. But I think realistically, he's not really in the running to be the next UCLA permanent head coach. For, forgetting the names, give me the profile of what you think is the next UCLA head coach. Well, I think they want somebody who's a proven winner. I think that's the big one. You know, they don't want to gamble on somebody who could be a home run. I think they want somebody who's done it, who's won championships or gotten, you know, deep in the tournament and had sustained success. So, you know, the two now, and I know you just said no names, but. Oh, I'm happy <laughs> for you to throw out names. You can throw them out all you want. I love playing this game. Yeah, I mean, the home run hires, obviously, I think the two top names have got to be Billy Donovan and Tony Bennett. The question is, are they interested? did and can you get them and you know I wrote a story about all the new kind of selling points that UCLA has now that they didn't have with their last coaching search yeah. when you look at the facilities the amount of money they can pay coaches uh, and, and now they're they're smartly uh, got getting this uh, committee together which was kind of the same method they used to get Chip Kelly they're doing it on the basketball front and using kind of uh, different different people and, and coming together to make this decision. So I think they're in a good spot to try to get that home run higher. Ben, it's a fascinating name to me uh, because I think one of the real draws with Andy Enfield when, when Pat Hayden hired him you know, six years ago was trying to sort of get an entertaining style of play. They'd seen what he had done in Florida Gulf Coast and thought, hey, you know, it's, it'd be great to win, it'd be even better to win in, with a flourish. Uh, are, are those expectations at UCLA? I mean, Tony Bennett is, is certainly not that guy. With that said, he is a proven winner. He's, you know, he, he'll be in Cameron Indoor tonight. If they win that game, they'll probably be the number one team in the country. So, you know, he's that guy to, to get you back maybe to Final Fours and, and, and to, to hang banners, but he'll do it, you know, sort of in his water torture style. Right. Well, you know, the funny thing is Steve Offord, when Dan Guerrero touted his style as a big selling point yeah. when he hired Steve Offord, they were going to score, they were going to be up-tempo, uh, they were going to be kind of free-flowing and fun to watch, and, you know, frankly, we saw how that turned out. So, I think that, you know, there's a lot of fans who are kind of missing that, that, uh, that Ben Howland essence of toughness and defensive-oriented play. Maybe not the most fun in the world to watch, but if it gets, it win if it gets wins, I think the fan base will be very, very happy. Yeah, it's amazing how time can sort of change the way you look <laughs> back at things. Ben Howland's three Final Fours, and he left, he, you know, left on a Pac-12 championship team. So uh, cer certainly had a, had a pretty good run at, at UCLA, Did, didn't ultimately hang that banner. Uh, last one, uh, getting back to this game, what, what do you think is, is the key to the game for this one? What ultimately decides it? I think it... Uh, I I have to assume UCLA is going to come out with the intensity to match SC, given that this is a rivalry game. They were kind of flat against Oregon State, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Can they move the ball, get the ball inside to Moses Brown, and get good shots and not settle for a lot of these step-back three-pointers yeah. early and late in the shot clock that have really kind of disrupted their offense? If UCLA gets a good assist ratio, uh, I think they win the game. All right, that is Ben Bolch. We appreciate the uh, perspective from the other side of town. He'll be covering another USC-UCLA rivalry game for the LA Times today. Ontario International Airport is one of Southern California's fastest-growing airports. Come experience the SoCal So Easy way with ONT. Go to flyontario.com to 